throw those right up in whatever you're making soup stir fry pasta gravy anything so delicious goodies up in here look at all these ferns and soft softness everybody's favorite bite hosts here asher ran yeah and chris blanchard it's that time of year again thanksgiving's just a few days out all the leaves are dropping it's a beautiful fall here in oregon and we're going to go climb up into the woods and try to find some chanterelle mushrooms mushrooms are going off all over there's several types of mushrooms that you can find to pick right now that are edible and choice but the kind that we're going to look for today are chanterelles we'll stumble into something else if we find any other cool mushrooms we'll show those off and uh, if we find something edible we'll bring it home but pretty confident we're going to be able to find some chanterelles up in these moist wet beautiful woods today so it's been a lot of rain there's been a lot of sun the combination of fall rain and sun uh, here in oregon usually means lots of mushrooms in the woods and chanterelle mushrooms are just such a good addition to throw on the thanksgiving the christmas the holiday feast table platter or plate so we're gonna get up in here wander around try to get into some mushrooms and we'll share whatever fun that we find in the woods with you guys today you can't really tell but it's actually a nice blue sunny sky up above us so hopefully the sun that's been coming in and uh, uh combined with the rain that just came through it's going to cause a whole bunch of these fresh mushrooms to pop and we're going to grab them add them to our holiday feasts so don't go nowhere you're watching the bite yeah Chris found a couple of mushrooms just now already. I mean, we, we just got in the patch. We just here. got into the patch. And right here is a little little couple beautiful, pretty decent fatties actually. Can't tell are they squishy at all. No, they look like they're gonna be fine. Nice. These look this one looks really good too. Let's go in there and throw a little knife underneath them. That one. It's got a nice curled cap on it. No, I didn't even get the cut off. We'll go ahead and give it a cut anyways. It's a decent mushroom right there. Look at that beautiful chanterelle. That's one for the bucket. Let's see what this one's like. Yeah, a little bit of, little bit of dirt and pine needle on it. That ain't too bad. It's another beautiful mushroom right there. Super nice chanterelle right here. Cover it on. Nice one. Perfect. Look at that beauty. Perfect mushroom right there. Lots of arguments on the internet of what's the best way to go whether pulling or cutting your mushrooms a lot of people swear by cutting and it's always kind of been the standard um, amongst conscious mushroom hunters was to cut your mushrooms but then they did a couple of studies and it turned out the patches where the mushrooms were pulled seemed to do better than where the mushrooms had been cut now some people say those studies are not large enough and are inconclusive and yada yada flawed data and other people say that those studies are accurate what it really comes down to is what do you feel like doing did you bring a knife with you what do you feel is more sustainable is best for the mushrooms um, i have a knife with me i'm going to cut them today leave the root side and side in the mushrooms favor and it also makes a cleaner cleaner mushroom going into your bin so you don't get as much dirt from that little root stock so i prefer to cut although i do believe um pulling is probably fine um what do you think is best pulling or cutting and why go ahead and let us know in the comments beneath if you've got some secret science behind why pulling is better does it leave the spore in the dirt cutting is better because it leaves the hey, spore in the dirt you might win us over with your comment you we might, might we might be you might cutting. win us over <laughs> nice gorgeous little double two heads one merged together stock it's like siamese twins nice little double you can tell it's starting to deteriorate just a little bit because the stem's kind of hollowing out but this thing's still firm and nice and very edible so you can see what kind of terrain we're we're rocking here you know we got the ferns moss ground 
Um, this is obviously a replant and you know, it's super dark in here because the canopy is too, too thick, but it leaves a perfect open mossy bed right here. And up against these uh, fir trees is uh, where we've been finding them. Um, we're looking for chanterelles, but hopefully, hopefully we can find some hedgehogs too. Cause that would really cap off the Thanksgiving feast. sun is a little bit down on us so we're not getting quite the brightness the sun peeking through the trees out here will hit some of the um, gold of those mushrooms and it'll make them glow and when you're wandering through so much brown and green gold popping out and glowing kind of stands out i don't know if you but, can see the one on the camera right now can you see it oh all the way over there Let's see if it'll pop up I don't know if you can see way top. over there where he's pointing there's a little gold one what's cool look right here this, there's this little half ring. These little white mushrooms here, they would have been what you call a fairy ring, which is when you see a cool little perfect ring of mushrooms. Wow. And you can tell that they are growing like that, even though the whole ring isn't right here. It's pretty cool. Let's follow Chris over to this perfect little yeah, this, this number one chanterelle. Right oh, there's a bunch more going right yeah, off yeah. of it. Oh yeah, yeah. We're, in, we're in the zone. But look at that thing. Wow, perfect, how perfect pretty button. is that? I mean, look at the stalk and everything. So I don't want to mess with it too much, you know, I actually used to kind of pull some pine needles away from it and some of the moss away from it, but I actually had a commenter change the way I do things and told me about the millicybin not wanting to see sunlight. So it's much better in that fact to pull it or cut it just so you don't reveal where it's growing from because that's where it's going to grow back from. So in my mind, I like to cut them. And that right there is a perfect button chanterelle. I mean, that thing is like, that's what they want that's right gorgeous. there. I will pull the sticks off it and stuff like that because it's nice to clean it in the field. When you throw it in the bin and it's got stuff all over it, you'd be surprised how much debris is in your basket or your bin by the time you're done. It's hilarious. That's one of the best parts of chanterelles, just the original. Every single one of them looks different. You know, a lot of mushroom strains, they, they grow identical to the next, but chanterelles are just wild. Well, you guys, I'm just cruising along and there is a nice, beautiful chanterelle mushroom right here underneath me by this fern. Look at that. It's perfect. Let's grab the knife and cut that baby. That right there is a pretty perfect chanterelle. Doesn't get a whole lot better than that. That is essentially a number one. Yeah, baby. Number one, baby. So right here as I come walking along, here's one big beautiful mushroom. Here's a nice little perfect button. Go ahead and put these right here. Here's another perfect button. Oh, nice big one. And then right over here on the other side of me, down in this hole, There's two more nice, big, perfect ones. Right over here is another nice, big one. Here's one more right over here. Another one right over here. Two more right here. couple more of them right there. That was a whole little pile of them right there. That was wild. Look at that handful of mushrooms. Amazing. All right here where I'm at. I can already see a bunch more. I see, oh my God, I see so many more. All right, so Asher just ran into another nice little patch of fatties. But I walked this way and I could see a little one there, one way back there, one way over there. So I'm just gonna gather those real quick and then we'll go, we'll go meet up with him. So I'll pull it out like I did, cut the foot, 
kind of drop it right back in his little zone. Boom. To me, that's good enough. Little, another little, little patch right there. We'll get those too. Ooh. I think I gotta, I gotta walk away from those ones real quick. I'll come back to those. Uh, oh, there it is. I thought a leaf tricked me. You know, oh my gosh. Look at the size of this one. Oh, I got a couple beauties right here. Look at the size of this thing. It's one of those special, really crazy cool ones. Oh, buddy. All right, it's not as big as I thought, but it is crazy. Look at that thing. Cool. But I see another really nice cone right there. And uh, I actually had seen that one first. Let's cut this one out. This one's really cool. Let's see what's going on here. This one's beautiful. Look at how perfect those are. Those are perfect. A lot of people say that when they start turning up their veil, that's when uh, they really start to deteriorate, but these are perfect. They have not started breaking down at all. Oh yeah. This one right here. And so honestly, I'll pull sticks off of them, but I won't try to like dig them up, you know? I can see where the, the stock is down here. I'll just shoot low, cut right through. Oh, that's another good one. That's another wild one. I got my little pile right here. I'm gonna put them in my hoodie, take them over to Asher. Gorgeous little double, two heads, one merged together stock. It's like Siamese twins. Nice little guy. One thing you'll notice a lot of is where you find chanterelle mushrooms, you also find yellow and gold leaf. <laughs> Pretty much guaranteed there's going to be a yellow or a gold leaf on the ground anytime you're out looking for chanterelles. Now that's not to say that yellow and gold leaves are an indicator or something that you should look for when hunting for chanterelles. Just yellow and gold leaves scattered across the floor's floor make it exponentially harder to find them because what you're doing is walking around looking for little spots of gold and when you walk by and you spot some gold leaves you're like oh there's some gold and you run over but it's just a leaf not a mushroom so I don't know if it's Murphy's law or someone's well if you're mushroom hunting you're gonna find leaves on the ground the same color and shape as the mushrooms you're looking for so couple of little beautiful button mushrooms and look hidden right in here I saw just a little bit of gold peeking out from underneath those needles. We're just gonna kinda come right underneath here, cut those both off. And these ones are a little bit dirty. Once we get some of this dirt and some pine needle off of them, that's two more essentially perfect little chanterelle mushrooms. These little size mushrooms really are my favorite. They go great in anything like a stir fry or in a gravy or in a pasta dish or anything. I, I think that they're, they're the perfect size because they have a really nice little con, um, consistency. They have a good texture to them and they have a lot of mushroomy flavor. Chanterelles don't have the strongest like mushroom flavor kick, but they've got a really good earthy kind of subtle sweet mushroomness to them. And I really, really like that in a lot of different applications. Um, this is the size that is perfect for adding to any kind of fine dining, any kind of restaurant application, and that's really what I got used to using these little mushrooms for, and they just look so pretty on a plate. So little number one buttons like this, that's, that's the um, creme de la creme when it comes to chanterelle picking for me. So we've hunted this place for years, 
And you guys have seen it on other episodes, we call it the golden trail, you know, the golden pathway, the field of gold, whatever you want to call it. But uh, I'm going to wait for Asher to catch up to me. But I just found a really nice mound uh, of chanterelles. I'm going to walk toward it. Oh, baby. Hey, Asher. Anyway, when he gets here, I'm going to have him get the better camera on this beautiful site. Chris is over here wandering around somewhere and sounds like he might have found something. Oh, but I see one right there on the way. We're going to stop and pick a pick a mushroom on our way to Chris. Look at this beautiful golden little chanterelle. We'll just get the knife right in there. Nice light little cut. Beautiful. Well, you guys, one of the biggest keys to mushroom picking is persistence. You get up into the woods, you don't see the mushrooms you're looking for. You keep on walking around, and you don't see the mushrooms you're looking for. And it's really easy to give up. And while it's also really important to move spots, to look around, to keep switching elevation levels and ground and cover types. But if you're persistent, you get up into the woods, an area that you know holds mushrooms, and you keep on walking around, you'll find them. And our persistence today has paid off. Big time. Because Happy Thanksgiving. here is a beautiful, beautiful patch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21 beautiful little mushrooms just sitting right here. Oh, over there, there's a little patch. There's another, what was that, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. So we just found 30. Nice. And 31 to cap it off. That one right there is mushroom number 31. We'll go ahead and take 31 first. Oh, although 31 is big and beautiful, this side of 31 is a bit soft and mushy. And this mushroom has seen better days. We're gonna go ahead and put this right back into its hole, let it melt away and spread its spores, and go ahead and collect these other 30 mushrooms. There's another couple over there too. Oh my lordy. We certainly hit the jackpot here. There's just over 30 button chanterelle mushrooms in this one little spot alone, and it's a pretty beautiful little cove. We're gonna go ahead and start harvesting them, get them into the bucket, and continue mashing around. The sun's kind of going down on us, so our time is limited, but what a beautiful little score right before Thanksgiving. So thank you to this forest for uh, giving us these mushrooms. cool about mushrooms is that mushrooms aren't actually the the plant mushrooms are like the fruit so where it's not like we're going and we're harvesting a whole plant and we're not killing the mushroom by taking these these are like picking the apples off of a tree so to speak the mushroom itself actually lives in the ground and the fungus and all the mycelium and that network all lives in the soil and it just pops these things up above the surface and these are its little fruit to go out and do what fruit does. Fruit stuff. Go do fruit stuff. So check this out, you guys. This is kind of an interesting thing that happens to chanterelles sometimes. And I'm not really sure exactly what causes it. Maybe one of you mushroom experts out there that knows a little bit more than me can explain it. But I've seen this before. You see, this would be one mushroom, here's one little stalk, and it didn't just split as if it wanted to turn into a couple. It's got all of these heads popping out, and it's all kind of scrambled up here. Might be um, some kind of genetic thing. It could be, you know, a fungus in a fungus or something. I'm not sure, but how wild is that? The top of the mushroom just scrambles out in a weird way like that. And look at this one. This one is gorgeous. Perfect top, a little bit wet. There's a little liquid coming out of the bottom of it. And when you cut a mushroom and some water comes out the bottom, 
See, my drip of that, look at how much liquid can come out of the bottom of this mushroom. But it's actually really firm, really solid. It's just the ground out here is soaking wet. So these mushrooms are soaking up a lot of liquid also. It's a beautiful little chanterelle though. One way that you can tell is that it's a chanterelle is that it doesn't have a definitive line of where the ribs start, stop. Chanterelles don't really have gills in the same way another mushroom would have, where they have like a whole bunch of gills all the way running along the bottom. Chanterelles kind of have these little ridges. They're very gill-like. They still look like gills, but they're not quite the same as the big ones you would see on like a larger, more, you know, um, traditional kind of a mushroom. You can see inside of here, the gill line running all the way down to there, even where it gets roughed up. And the whole shape of the mushroom is this nice one big long cone shape. You will find chanterelles that have a more traditional mushroom shape that looks kind of like this. But if you look underneath, what you'll see is that the mushroom actually runs all the way out around and curves back down. And it's not like a single solid button with the mushroom coming out of it, that this whole shape is actually the ridge of this cone kind of rolling out. And that's how you can tell that they're chanterelles. What a score of mushrooms. So many from here and right as the sun was going down on us too. That's quite a bucket of chanterelles. We just stumbled around out here until we got it, I don't know, about halfway full, but that's plenty for us for Thanksgiving. So starting to get uh, dark out here, the sun's going down on us, and we're probably gonna wrap it up. Um, we won't be able to help ourselves, and we'll probably pick another whole bunch on the walk back. But I think that we're gonna get out of these here woods and go clean these mushrooms up and get ready for the next adventure. I think we're gonna go get into something tomorrow also, so stay tuned for whatever we might do with that. Uh, mushroom picking is just a really beautiful way to spend some of the fall. It's an awesome way to celebrate some of Oregon's abundance and the fact that you can just come out here and pick these gorgeous, beautiful, bright, golden chanterelle mushrooms in the fall is just such a blessing. So if you've never gone mushroom picking, I highly encourage that you do it. Check out um, you know, some online resources, a Facebook group or something. Go pick up a book, learn a little bit about mushroom picking and uh, get out in the woods and try some of this for yourself because it's a, blast. it's a blast. It's a blast. And it goes great with fishing. And it goes amazing with fishing.